glimpse of hope, the solitude of fear. Legs to hold you close, but never hold you near. Hello, welcome to Four Walla. If you've returned, welcome back. Here we talk about true crime, so if that is your thing, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button, that way you'll be the first to know when the next story drops. That said, you ready? Today we are going to Glasgow, Scotland, to a little place called Govan. Here we meet Julie Riley. She's 47, has a daughter, Tiona, a sister, Lynn, her mum, Margaret, and has just recently became a gran for the first time. Everyone knows her as being happy, kind and funny. Tiona describes her mum lovingly when she says, Whenever you saw her, you always left her happier than what you were. She always had a way of making you feel good about yourself. I think she had that impact on a lot of people. She lives alone in a flat in Govan and is very much liked in her community, neighbours saying she would give your last, very kind and good-natured, lovely woman. Julie had her problems getting involved with drugs in her former years. Mum Margaret adopts Tiona to help both her daughter and granddaughter, which goes to show Julie had a good network of family around her. At some point, Julie is taken into hospital with a hypoxic brain injury. Hypoxia occurs when the brain has lacked oxygen and or blood. She's hospitalised for five months. This leaves Julie with some issues like memory loss, slow reaction times and some problems with speech. So there's a large vulnerable side to Julie which could easily be exploited in the wrong hands. By the time her grandson comes along, Julie's life was looking very bright. Off drugs and always going to her crisis centre appointments as well as hospital appointments keeping a diary to remind her of all her daily tasks. Although still having some issues after her brain injury, Julie is healthy, clean and happy and absolutely loves being a gran. In late January, early February of 2018, Julie calls her mum Margaret, telling her she's thinking about taking on a lodger. Margaret being worried about this idea doesn't agree, but Julie trying to subside her mum's anguish tells her he could be my carer, I know him mum. He's from Penalee. Penalee is a little place just next to Govan. Her mum disagrees with this bad idea and Julie puts the phone down angry with her mother's disagreement. Unbeknown to Margaret, this will be the last time she speaks with her daughter. After not hearing from Julie for a long while, even though she's angry when they last spoke, she would always be back in touch as if nothing had ever happened. Nothing got Julie down for long, but there's been no sign of her and on February the 15th, when Margaret gets a call from the hospital to say Julie hasn't shown up to her appointment, Julie's mum and sister Lynn know something's wrong and call the police. As Julie is classed as a vulnerable person, the police do some checking around and find out she hasn't been to any recent appointments anywhere, including the crisis centre which are things she doesn't miss. So a missing persons inquiry begins. Because of Julie's brain injury, it's first thought she might have got lost or maybe injured, but after extensive searches with all resources, canine units, helicopters, scuba divers, and door-to-door -door inquiries, they find nothing. Margaret tells police of her last phone call with Julie. Julie said she was going to take a lodger in as a carer. Police become a little suspicious. Who is this man? The man's name in question is Andrew Wallace. The police uncover that Wallace has recently split up with his girlfriend and needed somewhere to stay. And on the 11th of February, it's reported a few people he knew had seen him walking around with a suitcase. When they asked what was in it, he says, him and a friend had ran over a deer and were selling the meat. And another associate says that he received a text from Wallace on the 6th of February saying that he's going to scam Julie on the QT. This is also the same day Julie is last known to have used her bus ticket. 
red flags kick off everywhere. They find CCTV of Julian Wallace together at Aldi's buying groceries on Paisley Road West. This is the last sighting of Julie. Then finding more CCTV of Wallace alone, first in Asda and then in Aldi's, using Julie's card. It's enough to bring Wallace in for questioning on suspicion of fraud. When questioned, his answers are No comment. Police can clearly see scratches on his face and hands and when asked about this he says he was trying to cross the road when he was hit by a van, its wing mirror hit off his face as his body rolled along the side of it. He's remanded in custody on fraud charges. Police go to Julie's home and at first glance it appears clean and tidy although droplets of blood are found on the floor. So they left some carpet and a large blood staining is uncovered covering the house with luminol, which will show any blood even if it's been cleaned away. The entire house lights up. The living room. The kitchen. The hallway. Bathroom. Something gruesome has happened in this flat, particularly in the actual bath. Where saw marks are found in the plastic moulding near the drainage hole. On the 19th of April, a call comes in from a worried neighbour that a bone's been found with flesh on it at Ard Shield Road near Julie's home. And the day after that, two leg bones are found in another garden nearby. Pathologists will identify them as human, and DNA confirms they all belong to Julie. The following day, Wallace is questioned on suspicion of murder. Police will find Google searches on his phone that read, Killing someone with a knife. Fast and effective knife strikes. And there's also a Google Play entry looking for the anti-tracker app. An acquaintance comes forward and tells detectives, he came to my door telling me he needed to get rid of a body. Having enough circumstantial evidence and witness accounts, Andrew Wallace is charged on suspicion of murder. On the 4th of February 2019, Wallace decides to plead guilty and on the 8th of February is sentenced in the High Court in Glasgow by Judge Lady Ray, who is now able to disclose that Wallace had a previous conviction at the age of 15 of culpable homicide in 1992. On sentencing she will say, Andrew Wallace, you have pleaded guilty to the murder of a vulnerable, brain-damaged lady who took you into her home. Tragically, it is unclear how you carried out this evil and despicable act because you dismembered her body and it is unknown where her remains are except for the parts of her legs which were discovered by chance. You have a significant and serious record for violence including a conviction for culpable homicide in 1992 when you were sentenced to 10 years detention. You're in my view a dangerous man. I hereby sentence you to a mandatory life sentence of 28 years. On March the 5th of 2019, almost four weeks after his conviction, Andrew Wallace discloses where the rest of Julie's body is. East of where the police searches were conducted in a back garden of a tenement block in Ibrooks. The family at last get to bury Julie with the respect she deserves. Should this guy have even been released in the first place, or at least given longer than the original 10 years? What's your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments, and we'll have a wee chat.
Right then, this is my wee time out. Thank you so much for coming along to see me, and I'll see you next week. And remember, be kind to the person beside you, we're all human. Unless, of course, the person beside you is Andrew Watt. Hangs like flowers in her hall And her life seems so demanding She's just gone out with it all